Hello, I want to take you back in time, perhaps further than any story has ever taken you before. Somebody born at this time, if they were still alive today, will be about 150 times older than your grandpa. It's a long, long time ago, back to the Ice Age, when humans were few and far between across this land. Those that did live here were mainly hunters. They hunted for meat, reindeer maybe, or mammoth, maybe the odd wolf, or at least to protect themselves from the wolves. One such hunter was Red Fox, and this is his story. Now Red Fox was a great hunter. Among his tribe he was respected as a man who could always catch them food when food was scarce. In the summer it wasn't so much of an issue, they'd gather fruit from the bushes and that would be plenty to keep them fed. In the autumn they'd gather nuts and they'd try and store as many as they could for the winter time. But when winter came there was no choice but to hope that Red Fox had caught them something. And it didn't always happen. Even a great hunter like him couldn't always guarantee to get something. Well, one morning Red Fox went out into the forest with the tools of his trade, his bow and arrow and a sharpened stick to act as a spear. <clears throat> he also carried with him a flint stone which he'd um, whittled down to be as sharp as any knife that we have today to protect himself to sear through any flesh of animals who might jump upon him and surprise him. Well off he went through the wood with his pack of dogs. Sometimes he went with other men as well. Today he was alone, just the dogs for company, and they began to search out something to eat. They looked for reindeer, but there were none. They looked for woolly mammoths, not hard to find if they're there, but there was no evidence today of any in the forest. For some reason, he just couldn't find anything that he could catch and hunt. He was beginning to get a bit worried that he wouldn't get anything. He sat down on an old tree that had fallen in the storm, and rested for a moment. As he did so, he heard a distant noise, a strange noise, like a howling or, or a shouting or a combination of both. He couldn't quite work, it, work out what it was. He sat very still, trying to listen, and he found the direction of the shouting or the, or the noise. He turned to see where it was coming from. He couldn't see anything. Slowly, carefully, he crept towards it. When he got close, he realised it was coming from a pit. He crept to the very edge of the pit and peered down inside. And there inside he saw two beautiful eyes staring back up at him. Blue eyes the colour of the sky in winter. There was no mistaking what it was. They were the eyes of a wolf. The wolf looked up at him. The pit was too deep for the wolf to get out. And then Red Fox was surprised, because the wolf spoke. Please help me to get out of here. I promise not to hurt you. How can I believe a promise of a wolf, said Red Fox. I have nothing else to give you, and you have my word. Then Red Fox heard another voice, a much smaller one. Please help us to get out of here. He looked deeper into the gloom of the pit and realised there was another creature in there, a rat. I, I don't want to help a rat out of a pit. I want to be throwing you into a pit, said Red Fox. Please help us, said Rat. And then a th third voice. Help us. Help us now. This was a human voice, a man's voice. He peered deeper into the pit and then he saw that there was this third creature, a man. Someone he didn't know, there in the bottom of the pit, with the wolf and the rat. Who are you? I don't know you. He looked at the markings that the man had on his hands and on his face, made with ochre, typical of other tribes, but not from his own. Why should I help you? Because we need your help. But each of you are a threat to me in different ways, said Red Fox. How can I guarantee you won't hurt me? Well, said the wolf, we have made an agreement between ourselves that we will not hurt each other. Normally we would be enemies, but today we are prepared to work together. 
And look, we've kept that promise. So we'll keep our promise to you as well. Red Fox thought for a long while. Should he help them out? Should he spear them first and drag out their bodies? In the end he decided it was better to be kind. Nature gives as well as takes away. He got out a piece of rope from the pack he'd been wearing on his back. Rope made from woven animal skins, bits of skins that have been cast aside, that are very useful for tying together and making a strong rope. He used to tie it round carcasses of animals that he killed to drag them back to their um, tribe. So he dangled the rope down into the pit and shouted to the wolf, Grab hold of it with your teeth and I'll pull you out. He pulled it out. It was not easy to pull it out on his own. A wolf is a large animal. But he did so. And he did the same for the rat. The rat grabbed hold. This was much easier. Rats are much smaller. He pulled it out of the pit. Finally, he dangled the rope down again a third time and pulled the man out, the creature of whom he had the greatest fear, because you can never trust your fellow human being in a situation like that. The man, the wolf and the rat looked at Red Fox. Thank you, said the wolf. I will not forget this. Thank you, said the rat. I will not forget this. Well, anybody would have done the same in your position, said the man. And all three of them then went off in three different directions. Red Fox felt guilty that he hadn't brought back any meat for the tribe, but he also felt good that he'd helped his fellow creatures. He went back to the at caves where his tribe lived. And the next day, he heard a strange noise at the entrance to his cave. He went to see what it was, and it was the wolf, the same wolf with those same beautiful piercing blue eyes. The wolf was dragging meat to his front door, dragging a haunch of a mammoth, the whole carcass of a reindeer, a hare, enough meat to feed Red Fox and his family, and much of the rest of his tribe, for several days. What, what is this? said Red Fox. I promised you, said the wolf, I would not forget your kindness. This is your reward, the first of many. And the wolf left. Red Fox was thrilled. He was able to share the meat with his family and friends, and none of them would go hungry for several days. And before they could, in only two or three days' time, the, the wolf was back with more meat, more than the tribe could possibly eat together before it went bad. They used it to trade and were able to buy other things. Things were looking good. Red Fox didn't even need to go out and hunt anymore. Over and over again, the wolf returned with more and more meat, each time thanking Red Fox for his kindness. On the days when the wolf didn't come, Red Fox still had a visitor. It was the rat, the same rat that he had rescued. The rat didn't bring meat. It brought trinkets, little things that had been carved from teeth and ivory and stones. Jewels, necklaces, bands to wear on his hand. Well, Red Fox was amazed. This is wonderful, he said. Thank you for bringing all these things to me. It is my pleasure, said the rat. I steal them from other tribes and I bring them to you as my tribute to say thank you for rescuing me. I will bring you more. And he did. On many other days he will bring thing after thing after thing, beautiful items. And Red Fox became rich in these things too and was also able to trade them with other tribes. The tribe that Red Fox belonged to became rather lazy really. They didn't need to work any more. Things just came to them. They didn't know how, but somehow Red Fox seemed to be making it happen. <clears throat> then something happened. The chief went out with some of the men to hunt. They didn't need to anymore, but they did it for fun and as a tribute to the gods. Whilst he was out, a thief snuck into the chief's cave and stole some of his favourite items some weapons, some jewellery. The chief came back and he was distraught. Who has done this thing? 
but nobody could find out who it was. The next day, a man came through where they lived. A stranger. A stranger to most of them. Not to Red Fox, though. He recognised him as the man that he had t taken out of the pit with the wolf and the rat. The man went to see the chief. See, the man was jealous of Red Fox. But he was getting all these things from the wolf and the rat. And he wanted to get some sort of revenge. So he went to the chief and he said, Chief, I know who is stealing your things. It is Red Fox. He has been stealing from many people and you are but his latest victim. You should punish him. Punish him with death. The chief was furious. He ordered Red Fox to be brought before him. You have angered me. You have angered your forefathers. You have angered the gods. Only one punishment is fit for you, and that is death. And so Red Fox was tied to a tree, where he was left to spend the night before he would be killed in a ritual the next morning. He was terrified, and he wept bitterly. But as he wept, he heard a rustling in the leaves. It was the rat. What is the matter, Red Fox? He told the rat what had happened. The rat went away and came back with a small bag. I have been stealing from the shaman, the wise man, the magician, who helps people when they are poorly or ill. He has medicines in his cave. I brought one to you. I'll need more, me more than medicine if I'm, if I'm to be healed of being killed, said Red Fox. No, it's not you that needs healing. I also stole some poison. And I'm going to put that poison in the chief's daughter's food. She will be on the point of death. And at that point, you must ask to be brought before the chief once more. And you must offer him this medicine. It will cure her completely. But that was how it was. After begging and pleading, finally Red Fox was brought before the chief, who was desperate to try and help his daughter, who had fallen into a coma. Red Fox showed the chief the medicine. These are smeared on your daughter's skin, he said. She will feel better. She will recover. So the chief did exactly that. And she did recover. He asked Red Fox what was going on. And then Red Fox told him the whole truth about where he'd been getting the meat and the trinkets and the jewellery. About how he had rescued the rat and the wolf and the man from the pit. But the man was never grateful, said Red Fox. I believe it is him who has told you these stories. Well, the man by that time was nowhere to be found. He thought he had laid his trap and caught Red Fox. But it was not so. Red Fox was forgiven, and he married the chief's daughter as a reward. And they lived happily ever after, with the, with the wolf and the rat keeping them supplied until long into Red Fox's old age. That is my Stone Age story.